for This Is Fit Workouts Inside the Hoop. And today I have Nessia Starr with me from Trinity Star Hoops. And she is going to talk to us about chest hooping. Last week, Nessia, we were working on keeping the hoop right here. And so, yeah, I'll pass it over to you to help us get it up. All right, thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you for having me here. Um, so, chest tubing. Um, it's something that you have to work towards. That's number one, I would say, a uh, thing to think about. And Shannon totally it's said it right. Months right? to get it. Months. Exactly. So Shannon's totally right. One good exercise and technique to, to start working with to get the hoop higher up on the chest is first starting on the waist and then pulsing it up to the upper abs and then holding it there. So isolating here at the upper ab part. Once you've comfortably gotten that, you're able to sustain it and hold it there. We want to start thinking about how the chest itself is going to move with the hoop. So one way that I do this when I teach my classes is I talk about isolating the chest itself. And I do this actually without the hoop first. So I drop the hoop and we do a set of chest pumps and chest slides just to kind of get the chest moving and kind of smoothing out a little bit. So for a chest pump, we, actually let's stand to the side, it might be easier. Chest pump, we want to actually think about just isolating this muscle here and we want to push out to the front. front and then push back into it. So it's not your shoulders moving front and back like this. You're not pumping your chest that way. You're simply isolating that muscle in the chest. This takes a little bit of work. So you want to push forward and then pull back. Forward and then back. Forward and then back. And what you'll probably notice or experience in the beginning is a very slight movement. You're not going to see a big jolting front and back. If you're doing that, you're really, again, you're concentrating mostly on your shoulders, not your actual chest muscle. So to give yourself some time to work with that concept. Second concept is a chest slide. And chest slide is gonna simply use the same movement of forward, pushing into the hoop, and then you're gonna slide to the side, back, to the side, and front. So if your current is naturally, let's say, to the left, you're gonna go forward, slide to the left, slide back, slide to the right. Forward, slide to the left, slide back, and slide right. So eventually, coming into this kind of movement, where your chest is almost like it's um, on a track, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of on a track, and it's circulating like this. And your hoop is gonna be in the same rotation as your chest is moving, right? So that if you think about the current of the hoop, the way the hoop is moving, you want to start moving with that same current, so pushing into the hoop in the same direction. So again, coming back to our waist, um, and then getting it to the upper abs, holding it here, Simply moving slightly faster up, up the body will bring the hoop up. And then, and then eventually you can start pushing into that hoop, just like we did with the chest pump and the chest slide. So one thing you'll probably experience in the beginning is a lot of, you know, trying to get it up, trying to get it up, right? How do we do that? So how I usually explain this is, once we get it from here, from here to about your upper abs, you simply want to move slightly faster side to side. And then once you've held it there, you want to really isolate that muscle. So to get it a little bit further, again, you want to shake kind of side to side so that the hoop is kind of moving up, on like almost like a staircase up the body. So up like this, right? And as a beginner, you might be doing a lot of chest pumping more than chest sliding, simply because it's a little bit more challenging to get that unique movement going in the beginning. But I really encourage you to definitely bring your arms up above the head, or at least out so that you're not knocking your hoop with your elbow, right? That happens a lot. Getting up. Now, actually, what I just did there is a little simulation of what it can help you as a new hooper getting the hoop actually up there. So if you can't, if you're not comfortable moving from side to side swiftly going up, then you can actually kind of bend into it and push into the hoop. So here we are in our waist, here we are in our upper abs. I want to time it so that the hoop is on the right side. Again, I'm going to the left, the current to the left. I want to dip down with my knees and push up into the hoop. Now, this movement has to happen pretty quickly, okay? So you can't, what you don't want to do is go from keep doing, keep pushing into the hoop if it's not successfully going up. So you want to kind of set it up so that it's always on your upper abs, wait for the timing, dip with your knees, and push up in one big swoop. And again, once it's up here, you can start using chest pump, pumping front to back, or chest slide, sliding with the hoop. Now, the movement also, another thing to think of as I turn around to my back, my back 
is doing just as much movement as my front. A lot of times in the beginning, we tend to compensate by only using one portion of our body. So for example, you might only see yourself pushing up with the chest. And in that case, that could be useful for angle hooping. But for now, just to get the movement, we want to really accentuate each point of contact with the hoop. What I found really helpful, um, because I learned and did mostly just pumping with my chest, was again, to get my feet really grounded yeah. and focusing on the chest and all of the touch points. So noticing that it's actually everywhere that's touching. It's my chest, it's my side, it's my back, it's my side. That there are those contact points yes. that happen. Yeah. I love that. And actually another thing that's really, really useful is to is ground, like you said, grounding yourself and bringing yourself into the hoop. So if you feel like you're losing control a little bit, you dip into it a little bit and really ground your feet into the earth. That's another really great way to keep those points in check, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Awesome. So let's do just a quick review on all those touch or all those points. Missy has got us holding it here, and then we're going to speed up to bring it up top for our slide, where we've got some pump going forward, slide to each side, and touching our back with our feet grounded down in there. Yep. Um, and again, if you're having trouble in the beginning, being able to bend down and lift up the hoop, but getting yourself standing up right away with feet grounded. Yep. There's tons to work on with that, and it might take you a long time. But persevere. Remember all those touch points and you'll get through. Thank you, Nessia. Thank you so much, Shane. And we'll see you next time inside right. the hoop. Thank you.